Aloha. My name is David McGuire. Welcome. This is the sixth or seventh Art for Sharks installment. Uh, and now as we're emerging from COVID, we're hoping we will be able to do these in person. But what's great is we're doing these across the Pacific, across the oceans and connecting us all. I'm the director and founder of Shark Stewards. We are a nonprofit based in Berkeley, California, across from Cal Berkeley. And our mission is to protect sharks from overfishing and the shark fin trade, but also protecting critical marine habitat. So we like to save sharks, but also the place they live in. And more importantly, we try to connect us all to the ocean that we rely on for our own existence as humans. So Art for Sharks is a program started by my board member and dear friend, Pamela Comstock, who's screening in here from Waimea, Oahu. Uh, and she started this brainchild during COVID, but actually she is an artist and a mother of artists and friend of artists and also a lover of sharks in the ocean. So today's installment of Art for Sharks, we have teacher Buffy Whiteman from Kaneolani School in Oahu. Uh, she's a first grade teacher who is passionate about sharks and who used the Art for Sharks Art for Sharks, Sharks for Kids book that I wrote during COVID, which is a science guide uh, that youth can use to learn, to engage, and hopefully inspire them to protect sharks in the future. So thanks for joining. We'll be screening these live periodically. They'll be on our YouTube channel at Shark Stewards. And thank you for joining. Over to you, Pamela. Hi, everybody. So, um... Just so that everybody knows, Buffy is my best friend. I grew up with her. We went to high school together. Um, she's a year younger than me, so I was older than her in elementary school. We went to the same elementary school. Um, we go way back. And it's a bit of a dream. It is a dream. She's been living on Oahu for many years. And I just recently moved here. So it's really a dream to join her on her island. And I got so excited when I realized that she could share um, David's book with her classroom. And of course, because she's brilliant and an amazing teacher, she had this uh, amazing idea of sharing it with her class. And it just turned into this amazing event for her kids where they had the opportunity to learn about sharks through the book. And thanks to Shark Stewards and to David. Um, so a little bit of a background about Buffy. She's been first grade school teacher for several years now, but she's been teaching for over 17 years. Um, we donated a crate full of books to her and her, her classroom students so they could take the books home and remember it for the rest of their lives. Um, and what we'd like to do on this presentation today is talk to her about how she did it. And we hope that she'll encourage other teachers to do it too. We would like her to share her methods on her classroom learnings, her student interactions, their drawings, um, their paintings. And she's gonna talk about how the kids did a presentation at the end of their learnings, like full on child in front of their class presentation, the cutest thing in the world. They did this because of this book, um, all on sharks. Um, so just first wanted to introduce you to Buffy. Hi, Buffy, do you have something to Hi. say? Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. This is exciting. We did this, um, this uh, project during COVID. So this was like a true COVID year that we did this. Um, the kids had spent the first half of the year at home, Zooming just like this. I taught first graders, six-year-old wiggly people in their seats. So when um, we were, had the opportunity to do this, this lesson with this book, we were actually in person. So that made it really fun. So it was kind of this really fun, welcome back to school with a real life teacher and um, we're gonna learn about sharks. So that was really fun for them. So I'm gonna share this picture of Mrs. Whiteman who we will call Buffy here, but the kids refer to her as Mrs. Whiteman. Do they call you Mrs. Whiteman? They do. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's a picture of Buffy, beautiful Buffy, and one of the students' drawings. Look how beautiful that is, and her school. Yep. I teach at Kanoilani Elementary School on the island of Oahu in Waipio Gentry. This is the book um, by David that we were able to share with the classroom. 
Um, it's loaded. I was telling David that I couldn't believe like it shouldn't be sharks for kids. It should be sharks for adults because I learned things in this book that I never knew. Um, but this is the book and her students have it. And Buffy, do you have your copy? Do I you have, have my it? copy. Yep, I sure do. All right. So the first question, we have a handful of questions for Buffy. So I'm going to go ahead and just fire away. And the first question I have was, um, we see that you created a circle chart. Um, and if you look at the center, it says, what do you know about sharks? Right in the center. Can you tell us how you came up with this and how you were able to interact with your students and the book with this sure. chart? Sure. So, you know, before any big um, activity like this, we always kind of want to brainstorm and find out what the kids already know, right? Um, we also did like, um, a what do you know? What do you want to know? What have you learned? And I, we don't have that, that slide, but this was a good starting off point for my kiddos. Um, typically in, in a circle map like this, you would have all sorts of weird stuff, right? Like um, sharks attack people and eat people for lunch, you know, the, but, but I was really surprised when I did this circle map. So all I, all I had on the board was that circle in the middle. That was it. And then all of their ideas, those that's their brainstorming. I just kind of wrote it up there real quickly as they kind of shot out their answers. And, and it's, it's pretty true to, you know, factual, the things that, that they said, right? They've got sharp teeth, they eat fish, they bite, um, they swim in the ocean, they come out at night, they, um, what does it say? Um, they have gills to breathe. So I was they surprised- do not eat jellyfish. They do not eat jellyfish. Well, yeah. I, yeah. So, so they don't eat people. So we, we had a good talk about that one, but, um, you know, I was surprised that what these kids came up with were, you know, factual. I thought there would be some really crazy things that they'd seen on TV, but they seemed already going into this unit, they seemed pretty knowledgeable. Yeah, it's so cool. They were sitting on the carpet and you had those books there, those books. So those no, books those books came cool. later. Those books came later. I like literally blank slate. Hey guys, let's talk about sharks. Tell okay. me what you know. And they just started telling me things. Those books came later. Cool. That's so cool. I love that because that engaged them right away. Yeah. And then I saw that you had um, this sharks in Hawaii list and you listed these sharks. Did you get this from the book? We did not get that from the book. Oh, so okay. at this point, I had not even introduced the book, right? The book came later. Um, so we had started talking about sharks and then we said, hey, let's find out what kind of sharks we have in our oceans. So we started, we went to the library, we checked out books, we looked online uh, and yeah. this is what we came up with. So these were some things just as, that we had up in the classroom, different sharks that have swimming around. And this was generated by the students. Wow, this is cool because I didn't really know that. Like I didn't know, I don't know the sharks in Hawaii. I just, you know, I mean, I know a, a few but I don't, I don't know the different kinds of sharks nearby. And these were generated by the kids. This is what the kid. I was really surprised what these little six-year-olds knew about sharks. I was really surprised. And then I saw that you had this, the animal research list. And it looks like each child got to pick a shark that they were going to do research on. They, they yeah? did. Okay. So um, after we kind of just started looking at the, you know, at the library, at, at different books, then the box from um, Shark Stewards came in and we had this Yay. like unboxing in the classroom. I made it super magical. I said, wow, we got something in the mail. Someone sent us something and I opened it and I just, oh my gosh. And I pulled a book out and the kids were floored. They couldn't wait to get their hands on it. And so I had, you know, I actually had wink, wink, I'd already opened it and I wrote a little thing in there to the children of Kanoilani from, you know, shark stewards. I wrote a little thing and I put a sticker in there. Um, but then I gave them each a book and they just ate it up. They just flipped through the pages. They, they unfortunately we couldn't sit with buddies. So our buddies were three feet apart at the time, but turn to page four, look at the one on page four. They were so excited thumbing through the book and looking at the photos. It was the photos that they just were bananas yeah. over. Yeah. 
That's so cool, Buffy. I didn't know that you did it like that. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, so it was kind of this unboxing. And then, and so then we yeah. had already had a little bit of like some front loading of what they had already known about sharks just because we'd gone to the library and read about sharks. Then they got the book and from the book, they got to choose which shark they wanted to study. I see. And so I think on that chart, it said um, Wabagong. Wabagong was one oh, yeah. of the one of the sharks. And, and that was something we couldn't find any information on. So I think somebody did that one. Yep. Shiden did that one. So um, there were quite a few kids that wanted to do that one because it's such a funny name, but we used the book and that's where he got his, the majority of his research for his paper. And yes, we do research papers in the first grade. So here's what, one on the, on the board. Yes. So I just wanted to show that there was some writing that you did. So I'm yeah. going to go to um, number four, question number four, is mm -hmm. the writing about sharks. Um, how did the kids write about their learnings? Like they wrote and they drew pictures. Right. Well, so that this child had a picture of a shark and then she had her paragraph and her outline about it. Yeah, totally. So um, so once they picked their, their shark from the book, we used the book as like our primary resource. And then we also went to the library again. We used other books as resource, but the art, the art for kids was our primary resource. And um, then they started taking notes and getting all the information that they knew on that shark. And then we then they generated these awesome paragraphs, um, which had like a topic sentence and a closing sentence. But then they had to come up with their own big ideas, um, mm -hmm. one big idea with this with supporting details. Right. I'm kind yeah. of I'm kind of amazed because it's first grade. So guys, I can't even remember when I first started writing. Like I know in kindergarten you write letters, but these kids are writing like fluorescent writing. green and then you know <laughs> things. I don't think I wrote the word fluorescent when I was six years old. I'm like, yeah, I'm actually yeah. kind of impressed. Yeah. Honestly, I saw these paragraphs. I'm like, first grade? I thought they did that more in second and third. Yeah. Yeah, they talk really about the cool that they were able to do that. And then yeah. I'm going to go ahead and just ask you questions while I flash their amazing, some of these, this is when they started to do the art. Yeah, like, yeah. So here they art. are. Yep, here they are. So what they had to do is then once they had figured out what shark they wanted to do and they had written their research paper, uh -huh. they got to do an art project. So we did a crayon resist with um, watercolors over it. Um, but then I kind of wanted to get some of that nonfiction text feature in there and make sure that they labeled it. And um, yeah, yeah and, the, and we had to make sure that it was like the eye was pointing to the eye and the dorsal fin was pointing to the dorsal fin. And so then they started to know, learn the anatomy of the shark that they had studied. And then they had these beautiful pictures. They were beautiful. Yeah, they were beautiful. I have mm -hmm. some that you sent me. So question six. What did the kids in general feel about learning about sharks? I mean, were they, was it one of the most exciting topics they got to learn about? Like it was pretty, it was pretty exciting. You know, um, in Hawaii, I, my takeaway as a teacher is like, I kind of realized that why I think these kids knew so much, why they had so much background knowledge about sharks is because they live on an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, right? And sharks are very real here, right? So, um, so they were knowledgeable. It was also exciting because um, there's something here in Hawaii um, that Hawaiians um, have. It's called their amakua. And an amakua is like um, an ancestor. And some Hawaiian um, people believe that the shark is their ancestor. Um, some believe that it's the pu'el, which is the owl. So when I started introducing these sharks, I did have some kids say, oh yeah, the shark's my amakua. So they kind they they already had a connection to sharks deeper than just oh a shark swims in the ocean and is gonna eat you you know so they they it was it was interesting to see what they knew so this was really fun and and they were very connected very connected okay I have another question um, sure. you worked with each student on a presentation and did you feel that drawing the sharks and doing the artwork contributed to their learning, not just sure. reading the book, but yeah. having them draw it. Did you feel yeah. like? Because it made, them have like a real, it made them have a real personal connection, right? Like they needed to really know their shark 
They couldn't just read about it and then tell me about it. They needed, I mean, look at this one. Look at this bull shark. How crazy is this, right? They're all I mean, so beautiful. And so I this is them. not, this is not just from reading the text, right? And the text in the book for first grade was a, was was a little advanced, but I was able to read it to them, the parts that they were unable to. And so they were able to understand, you know, with a, and that's what I encourage as a teacher, right? Yeah. Parents read to kid, children. But look at, I mean, look at the the detail, right? Mm -hmm. They got a lot of detail from from these images that are in the in the book. Right. So you feel that they learned the book was really a driver on. Yeah. Yeah. It's, on. Yeah, definitely. Oh, it's very it. much like a, a really good resource. Yeah. I have so many beautiful ones. I'm just going to show them to everybody so they can see <laughs> that one smiling. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I love what you did is how you made them point out. There's the dorsal. Yeah. There's the. Yeah you know, the, the six gills, there's the, it's cause that's how they first learn how to really point things out when you're looking right. at an image. So I really tried to integrate, just make it super cohesive, right? Mm -hmm. The art with the non-text features, um, uh, the non-fiction text features, um, reading, their writing, um, every, it was just all comprehensive. I mean, this stuff is this, you know, this little girl. An interesting shark. <laughs> <laughs> I know which shark is that, Buffy? Which one did Madison get? I don't she let's look, look tiger at shark. Feet. That's a tiger which shark. What did Madison have? Spiny Madison dogfish. Is... She had this, the spiny dogfish. Is that no, she dog ended up fish? yeah, but then she changed it to tiger shark. She changed oh tiger shark. Yeah, yeah she changed it. I was she looking having a hard time finding finding, finding some info on that. So do you recommend other teachers to take the book into the classroom? I mean, would you recommend this book? Sure. So, so you guys were kind enough to send me enough that I was able to give each child one. I kept one for my classroom. Mm -hmm. I gave one to our classroom, I mean, our school library. And okay. I made sure that I put the pit, the, I wrote in there too, who it was from with the sticker. And then there was enough that I gave one to every teacher on my grade level. So I'm hoping that... This is something that maybe even grade one that we can do just as, a, as an interest, right? Even though it doesn't fall into our necessarily our NGSS standards, but this was so engaging and it just made them feel really um, connected. That's great. I have one more question. Sure, um, because my, my last question is, sorry. my last question is, um, do you have any suggestions for other teachers and how important it was to see and draw sharks to learn about them? And then with that question is, tell us about how the presentation went. I know this is one kid and I had to uh, be safe and cover him, yeah, yeah. but tell us how the presentation went and do you have any suggestions um, for other teachers on how important it is to teach them about sharks? So, you know, David, when he when he first introduced himself, he talked about the, you know our um, connection to the ocean and how much you know what the ocean means to us. I, I do kind of want to backtrack a little bit. When I first started teaching this to the class and I got the books and I did the unboxing, I did read your mission statement to my students. And your mission statement says saving endangered sharks from overfishing in the shark fin trade and protecting critical marine habitat. And it went on to say, sharks keep the oceans healthy. We rely on the oceans for over half of our oxygen. So reading that, the kids, it really hit them. It hit them really hard. And I actually had one little girl cry because she said, why are people so mean to sharks? You know, why, you know, I was surprised, really surprised that my students were so compassionate with sharks because really, they're really vilified, right? Sharks, like I'm not going in the water, I'm gonna get eaten by a shark. But um, they were very compassionate. Um, it, it, was, it, was, it was very refreshing to see. Um, so in terms of other teachers doing this, on, this, on an island, I think, it's, I think it's a great thing to do. I think it's a great thing to teach, right? We are in, on an island and there are sharks in our waters. Um, as far as our presentation went, this was the best part. They got to stand up and they got to be the shining stars and the experts on their sharks. So here's my little guy standing in front of the class. 
He's reading his presentation. He got to show his picture. He got to field questions. He was the expert. I had teachers in there. I had administration in there. And, oh, really? and they just, yeah, they just, just thought it was the best. Were they nervous? So, Were any of them nervous? No, they're not oh. nervous. These kids were experts. They wanted to share their knowledge. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> wow, Buffy, I did not know it was, I mean, I knew at the time when you were doing it, we were so excited. She was sharing with, with me at the time, David, when she was doing it. And it was so exciting to hear how they took it. And then all of a sudden it was like the school year was ending. And it just, it, since it just is amazing how time flies and how much these kids learn, but they got so much out of this. I remember, I remember yeah. when you were telling me about it, Buffy. So yeah. thank and you. Thank, thank you, you guys, David. Thank you. That, that book is, I, it will definitely be a resource in my classroom for sure. Well, I, I can't tell you how gratifying this is. You know, as a, as a writer, you sit alone quite often, and especially during COVID, not talking to anyone. And uh, I also teach, and I wasn't able to teach, and my classes at the university, which are field classes, got canceled. So basically, I was almost out of work, besides Shark Steward, because I do full-time. But it's like, okay, I'm going to write a book, a kid's book. And, and, you know, this is like the most gratifying thing for all the work that it takes to go in and write a book. You know, you, to have not only people read it, but to actually the interaction and the learning and also the art, them actually, the kids actually making art, like you said, helps them understand the morphology, the shapes, the anatomy, mm -hmm. the fins, why fins lift. You know, there's so much there that kids can learn more through their exercises that go way go beyond the book. So it, this is exciting for me uh, being a part-time resident and hopefully sometime full-time. Um, there is a strong connection in Hawaii, which actually made it easier for us for the shark, first shark fin ban in the US. Uh, also, we just recently worked on a law that makes it illegal to kill sharks recreationally or for sport. Hawaiians rever sharks. They are culturally associated with sharks. They also are people deeply uh, uh, connected to the ocean and ocean life. So they're not afraid of sharks. I have a lot of friends who are Hawaiians who are divers and I'm a diver there. And we've, we dive with tiger sharks all the time, every day when I can. And there's this sense of calm and it's, they're not going to hurt us that you don't see in other parts of the world. So I think it's, it's amazing. The kids are so connected, but not surprising to me uh, yeah. being in Hawaii on that Island. Uh, and so I'd love to take what you've started and bring it to other youth and teachers, maybe not so close to the ocean or not so connected. Right. And I think art is really a great, uh, it's like a telegraph. It's, it's a much better conduit, I think. All kids like to draw or, or create in some way until we adults try to drum that out of them, <laughs> you know, put them in a suit and tie and march off to work. Uh, but there's so much that can be expressed, not only by the, by the youth, by the child, but also what the child can express to we as adults and maybe help us save sharks. So thank you so much. And thank you, Pamela, for donating the case of books to the Kanealani School. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you guys so much. That was fun. That was so cool. much fun. Oh, great. So pe people want the book. It's online at sharkstewards.org. We also have free science sheets uh, that we're expanding every week. So there are a lot of tropical sharks, Hawaii sharks. Uh, mostly we're working on endangered species that we're working to protect internationally. Uh, this fall in, in Panama will be in, at the Convention of International Trade of Endangered Species to uplist, uplist endangered manta rays, endangered uh, scalloped hammerheads, which also live in Hawaii, but also other species to protect them because so many are threatened and disappearing. So uh, go to our website, sign our petition to ban the U.S. trade in shark fin, and follow the follow the pattern that uh, or the lead that Hawaii has done. It's illegal to commercially fish sharks in Hawaii. It's illegal to recreationally fish. And people are diving with them and bringing in a lot of money through dive tourism. So it's a great role and a great, a great pattern that is, or role model that we can take to 
Indonesia and Malaysia and other parts of the world and uh, protect sharks in the ocean we all love. So aloha, mahalo, thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you in the next Art for Sharks. Aloha. Thank you, aloha.